President Trump in Israel. It's Skywatch TV for Monday, May 22nd, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, North Korea on Sunday fired another missile, a medium-range missile this time. The latest test by the country, which is speeding up development of its nuclear weapons and the missiles to carry them. The rocket was fired from near uh, the North Korean county of Pukchang and flew eastward for about 310 miles. White House officials traveling with the president in Saudi Arabia, the first stop on his overseas tour, said this system, which was last tested in February, has a shorter range than the most recent missile tests conducted by North Korea. U.S. Pacific Command followed the missile until it splashed into the sea. President Trump, as we mentioned, in Israel today, and 50 years after Israel captured the Western Wall, President Donald Trump has become the first American president to visit the holy site. It's an historic visit in which he was accompanied by his Jewish relatives, his daughter Ivanka married to Jared Kushner, who was raised an Orthodox Jew. Trump and his wife Melania first met the heads of various Christian denominations in Jerusalem. They began their tour at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is believed to, by some to be the uh, site of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. Security camera footage showed the entourage, hundreds of people, following the president and his wife, as they walked from the Jaffa Gate to the Holy Sepulchre, uh, they were greeted outside the church by the Armenian and Greek Orthodox patriarchs of Jerusalem. From there, they went inside, took some photographs, uh, traveled back to the Jaffa Gate, and then transported to the Western Wall, where President Trump prayed and uh, placed a prayer in the stones of the Western Wall. It had been announced that President Trump would speak and deliver a speech at uh, Masada, which is a site with real significance to Jews, uh, I think the closest equivalent here in the United States for Texans anyway would be the Alamo. But uh, instead, he'll speak at the Israel Museum. This is according to National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. The uh, Israel Air Force does not allow helicopters to land at Masada. It's not safe. It kicks up an all, a lot of dust and rocks, which is not good for the, uh, the ancient ruins, nor is it good for helicopter rotor blades. Um, last time an American helicopter landed there for a, an unnamed defense secretary, at least unnamed in this article, uh, it damaged both the remains of the fort and the uh, helicopter. They had uh, apparently offered, according to Israeli officials, to land at the bottom of the site and transport President Trump up to the site via cable car, which is how President George W. Bush visited Masada, but the uh, White House turned down the offer. The first stop on the tour, as we mentioned, Saudi Arabia. And while there, the president signed a $110 billion arms deal with Saudi Arabia's King Salman. Trump said um, afterward, this was a tremendous day, tremendous investments in the United States, hundreds of billions of dollars investments in the United States and jobs, jobs, jobs. Now, knowing that Saudi Arabia has in the past at least under the table, been funding violent Islamists. Why would the government, why would President Trump sign such a deal? Well, again, jobs, jobs, jobs. The American consumer is tapped out. We've got all the credit we can handle and more. And I'll talk about this some more tomorrow and show a couple of charts. But the U U.S. consumer drives 70% of the economy. And the way we have been spending lately is by borrowing the money first to buy homes, to buy cars, to send our kids to college. And we're tapped out. Demand for new loans is dropping. Demand for new car loans is dropping, which means auto sales are dropping. Other spending is beginning to drop. Even though the uh, stock market is hitting all time highs, again, it's there because of borrowed money. And if we're not borrowing sooner or later, the bubbles will begin to deflate. So how do we keep the economy going? We bring in money from outside. And oh, look, there's a rich Arab kingdom that wants to buy lots and lots of weaponry. Now, the other part of this equation is that it balances power in the Middle East against Iran. Helps offset what President Obama tried to accomplish with his uh, nuclear deal. But ultimately, those are eggs that we're juggling in the Middle East. And at the end of the day, Shia and Sunni, neither sect, really going to be friendly with the West because Islam is not interested in coexistence. It is interested in capitulation, submit or die. Well, 
Um, one thing that uh, was on the president's itinerary that has got the Internet buzzing today is this image you see behind me. Um, the president, along with King Salman and President uh, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi of Egypt, with their hands on this glowing globe thing. Well, the press hadn't been told in advance the president was going to put his hands on a globe. He doesn't look particularly comfortable, but remember, President Trump is kind of a germaphobe. He likes to have, you know, hand sanitizer, and here he's touching this thing, and he doesn't know who else. Anyway, uh, what they were doing was launching a new... Uh, Global Center for Combating Extremist Ideology. This is a new anti-terror center in Riyadh. And the uh, glowing orb, putting the hands on the orb, officially launched the center because apparently just cutting a ribbon wouldn't do it. But needless to say, internet conspiracy theorists had a lot of fun with this picture. Uh, more details from President Trump's first budget proposal have been leaked out over the weekend. Reports coming in from Bloomberg, from the Washington Post, New York Times, Associated Press. Here, in a nutshell, is what this budget contains. About a $1.7 trillion, that is trillion with a T, dollar cut in entitlement programs. Uh, nearly $200 billion cut from the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, that's the modern version of food stamps. This would be cut over the next 10 years, but that's a 25% reduction. Um, the food stamp reduction, part of a broader $274 billion welfare reform effort. The budget also calls for about $800 billion in cuts to Medicaid in fiscal year 2018. Budget also calls for $2.6 billion in border spending for border security. $1.6 billion earmarked for the wall. Uh, the budget also expected to propose major discretionary spending cuts. Uh, this are, these are across-the-board cuts in the administration. Um, 54 billion, as much as 54 billion cut uh, next year alone. Uh, as you might guess, Democrats are already up in arms. The formal draft of the budget will not be released until Tuesday. Did Turkey's president order an attack on protesters outside the Turkish embassy in Washington, D.C.? If you've been looking over the weekend, you might have seen some video, YouTube and elsewhere, of security for President Recep Tayyip Erdogan basically going to town on protesters outside their embassy. Um, a new video has now come out showing the head of the security detail, apparently, talking with President Erdogan, who was sitting in his limo for about 15 seconds. Um, shortly after that conversation, the bodyguard pokes his head out, summons another security officer, and then suddenly a group of Erdogan's bodyguards rush the crowd and begin pummeling them. Some of the images and the videos were disturbing. A woman being choked, a gentleman on the ground being kicked in the face. Um, Washington police, Metropolitan police, rushed in to break it up, but um, there were some people who got hurt. Uh, Erdogan and the Turkish, uh, Turkish government blaming the Metropolitan Police for not acting quickly enough to um, intervene and remove the protesters. But the chief of the Metropolitan Police described the incident as a brutal attack on peaceful protesters. Hmm. Finally, astronomers around the world are monitoring the recently named Tabby's Star. This is the star that has been varying in, in brightness and intensity over the past, well, 150 years. Um, on Friday, it began to dim again and pretty rapidly, down almost 22% in a matter of hours. So astronomers are tracking this very quickly. Nobody really knows why the star brightens and dims the way it does. The image behind me is one suggestion. Scientists think it may be surrounded by a Dyson sphere. A Dyson sphere. In 1959, physicist Freeman Dyson suggested that a sufficiently advanced alien civilization might try to harness the energy of its sun by surrounding it with solar collectors and then beaming the energy back to its home world. It's an interesting concept. Engineering-wise, I have no idea how this could possibly be, but then again, if I could figure this out, I'd be an engineer for a living. Anyway, uh, this plays into the disclosure meme that is like Chinese water torture, drip, drip, dripping through our media on a weekly basis. Um, so again, astronomers looking at this right now to see if there might be some way of detecting, finding out some cause 
for the fluctuations in uh, brightness coming from Tabby's star. Uh, this, again, a popular, though unlikely, scenario. Hmm. Download our new mobile app so you can take Skywatch TV with you in your pocket. You'll find a link at our website, skywatchtv.com. Check the top menu bar. That'll direct you to the Play Store, the app stores for uh, iTunes. That's iOS, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, uh, the Google Play Store, Windows Phone, and the uh, Kindle App Store for uh, the Amazon Kindle Fire tablets. You'll find links to the rest of our social media sites there as well. My stuff is all online at derekpgilbert.com. And we thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. Jack the Ripper's dark deeds actually began long before 1888. And it wasn't a mere man who committed the crimes, but a demon in league with devilish men, a group of men called Red Wing. Only one small group of valiant men and women stand against this evil, a group that place their faith in Christ alone. And they protect a secret, a secret of blood that Red Wing hopes to use to usher in the reign of Antichrist and the end of day. Red Wing is called Red Wing because they want to kill the church. They mm -hmm. want to forever stop Christ from coming back. So it's the Holy Spirit, the dove, mm -hmm. with a murdered, a, a a has been slain, yeah. a wounded mm. dove. Ultimately, we still have to remember that the one who is in control is God Almighty, and we have to go to Him, and we have to suit up every time we go out. I like writing historical fiction because I like to use, I like to teach spiritual warfare in mm -hmm. novels through real events because I believe that behind these real events, there are spirits moving the, the yeah. pieces mm -hmm. on the chessboard. Imagine, a supernatural thriller that brings the cutting-edge Christian research of Tom Horn, Steve Quayle, and L.A. Marzulli alive through the skill of a master storyteller. Set in Victorian England during Jack the Ripper's reign of terror, the new novel by Sharon K. Gilbert asks the question, what if the Ripper wasn't caught because he wasn't human? And what if his gruesome work was part of a ritual to bring forth the Antichrist? Skywatch TV is proud to offer Blood Lies, book one of the Red Wing Saga, the first in a new series by Skywatch TV's Sharon K. Gilbert. Blood Lies tells the story of a valiant group of men and women who stand against the ancient enemy of mankind with nothing but a prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit to protect them. Plus, when you order Blood Lies from Skywatch TV, we'll also include two additional books to prepare you for the real spiritual battles that all Christians face. Lucifer's War by Linda Rios Brook, a historical examination of Satan and the demon gods who rebelled against their creator. And People, Pigs, and Principalities, true accounts of angels and demons by deliverance minister Don Dickerman. Over a $30 value, absolutely free, when you purchase Blood Lies for only $19.95 in this special offer, exclusively at the Skywatch TV store. Blood Lies, a thrilling account of spiritual warfare based on biblical truth, featuring characters you'll grow to love. The Blood Lies special offer available now at the Skywatch TV store. Today and 50 years after Israel captured the Western Wall, President Donald Trump has become the first American president to visit the holy site. It's an historic visit in which he was accompanied by his Jewish relatives, his daughter Ivanka married to Jared Kushner, who was raised an Orthodox Jew. Trump and his wife Melania first met the heads of various Christian denominations in Jerusalem. They began their tour at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is believed President Trump in Israel. 
It's Skywatch TV for Monday, May 22nd, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, North Korea on Sunday fired another missile, a medium-range missile this time. The latest test by the country, which is speeding up development of its nuclear weapons and the missiles to carry them. The rocket was fired from near where President Trump prayed and uh, placed a prayer in the stones of the Western Wall. It had been announced that President Trump would speak and deliver a speech at uh, Masada, which is a site with real significance to Jews. Uh, I think the closest equivalent here in the United States, for Texans anyway, would be the Alamo. But uh, instead, he'll speak at the Israel Museum. This is by some to be the uh, site of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. Security camera footage showed the entourage, hundreds of people, following the president and his wife as they walked from the Jaffa Gate to the Holy Sepulcher. Uh, they were greeted outside the church by the Armenian and Greek Orthodox patriarchs of Jerusalem. From there, they went inside, took some photographs, uh, traveled back to the Jaffa Gate, and then transported to the Western Wall. Here, uh, the North Korean county of Puk Chang and flew eastward for about 310 miles. White House officials traveling with the president in Saudi Arabia, the first stop on his overseas tour, said this system, which was last tested in February, has a shorter range than the most recent missile tests conducted by North Korea. U.S. Pacific Command followed the missile until it splashed into the sea. President Trump, as we mentioned, in Israel...